You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. From his Central Texas Command Center, deep behind enemy lines, the information war continues. It's Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Well, we got Army paramedics like Jennifer calling in. We've got uh, Michelle in South Carolina reporting on hospitals, volunteering to take Ebola patients. Oh, yeah, I've heard that. Oh, bring them here. Spread it. We've got uh, retired medical workers wanting to comment. Chris in North Dakota, Kim Bio and radiology uh, specialist, wants to comment on what's happening. What do you think is going on? Well, I don't know exactly what's going on with the government, but I just want to let people know, now, this is, information that i've received and it's a little might be a little outdated but what people need to know about ebola is that as long as you don't have any open source in your skin and you don't get the uh contaminated substance in your mouth your nose or your eyes generally you're protected now when it comes to the two nurses that were working on uh mr duncan in down in dallas what i surmise what happened and how they got infected is in the late stages of the virus, your internal your internal organs are liquefying. And what happened with him is his eoli, the, the air sacs in your lungs, uh, were bursting and filled with uh, fluid similar to pneumonia. And when you're coughing and uh, you're going to be expelling those heavy droplets out into the air into uh, a three to five foot radius. And so if they had any charts, any pens, anything like that, that they sat down on a hard surface that they didn't de decontaminate after they took off and they, they down-dressed, they got out. No, of I agree with you. Plus, they told them to put tape around their necks. That could pull some skin off, do that. My, my point is this. I'm no virologist, but it used to hit like 36 people, and it would it'd be a national news story or a world story. Now it's got thousands it, it, it's mutated, it, it lives in the body longer, it's, cure, it's clearly getting stronger. So what you're going off of is the old Ebola. We don't know yet what's happening with this new one, but it's certainly radically different. And that, that's my point exactly, is with, uh, as you were commenting on earlier, how many uh, infections, they, they estimate that after every uh, third to fourth generation of infection, so you got one person spread it to two people, two people spread it to four people, four people spread it to eight people. By the time you're getting to that eight people that are infected, the, view, the virus is, is going to mutate by that fourth generation of infection. And with all these millions of people that are getting in Africa, they believe it may go airborne very soon. And that's the $64 trillion issue. Thank you so much. Uh, let's go ahead and go to Jennifer in Pennsylvania, a former Army paramedic. What's your take on this, Jennifer? Hey, Alex, huge supporter of your everything, all your products. Thank you. Too. Thank you. Um, mine is about the Hippocratic Oath. My question is, maybe to you or the audience, um, we all have to take an oath. Just like the president has to take an oath, just like... Yeah, uh, do no uh, harm, uh, Hippocrates, yes. We know the oath probably doesn't mean much to them, but this is people have died um, because of that oath. And my question, I, I don't really know how to phrase this question without... Make it too confusing, but how far, um, what does that a Hippocratic Oath mean? Does that mean we put ourselves in, in jeopardy as paramedics? As that my, my well, you've got to triage it. And, and so you contain the African countries, you try to give them aid, but you don't let it spread. I mean, the Hippocratic Oath says you don't let a contagion spread. That's, that's first off. They've inverted it to say, bring all the Ebola patients here. It's like Joe Biggs went to UT and 17 or 30 people said, bring Ebola here. How's it? You know, basically get Ebola to prove you're liberal. So that's kind of an inverted Hippocratic Oath. You contain it. You help those that you, as much as you can, but it's a triage. You don't spread it to show that you're, you know, liberal. Oh, yeah, I know that. I mean, we're, we take an oath to protect and defend the weak and sick, right? Just like the president takes the oath, but, you know, maybe the oath doesn't mean something, but I know it. we... Well, exactly, but, but then you take another oath to this country and to your family, and family first. Well, God first, then family, then the country. So what they need to be doing is protecting our country first, because if they won't protect this country, they won't protect anything. 
And the truth is the globalists hate this country and are shutting down our power systems and raising our taxes. And the globalists that have become powerful off this nation have disdain for it. They have no respect for us. When you're out on the road, the last place you want to be is on the road. But if the unfortunate happens, you'll be glad you were wearing diamond gussets. There's a place down in Tennessee where they make blue diamond gusset jeans. They so pride in every stitch. Guarantee you love the way they fit. They put a diamond gusset in the crotch where you need it most. Blue diamond gussets got it. We turn jeans inside out. Diamond Gusset Jeans. Made in the USA with unparalleled quality. Our Defender motorcycle jeans combine gusset comfort with Kevlar protection so you can ride all day with confidence. Order yours at gusset.com. Diamond Gusset Jeans got it. Others don't. We're live. October 19th, it's Sunday. We're broadcasting worldwide. There's no other talk radio like this. We're biased. We love the truth. KLN, Los Angeles, Clone Radio. We play the songs that sound more like everyone else than anyone else. Clone. No, we're not clones. Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel okay. Castro took the guns. Hugo Chavez took the guns. 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. The Republic will rise again when you attempt to take our guns. I have sworn upon the altar of God. Eternal I have sworn as well. Every form of tyranny over the mind of man. The answer to 1984 is 1776. You're listening to The Alex Jones Show. We got Daryl in North Carolina. He says he's got intel out of Fort Detrick, the big bioweapons command base. We got Michelle, South Carolina, saying hospitals are volunteering to take Ebola patients. That's in the news. Frank in New York, retired medical worker, wants to talk about Ebola. Gabe says it's going to get a lot worse. We've got Pam in Texas. She's canceled her tickets with American Airlines, or United Airlines. And we're joined for this hour. We'll be taking calls with him by Robert David Steele. He's a former Marine, CIA case officer, U.S. spy hacker, CEO. He's probably better known as being a hacker and best-selling author. CEO of Open Source Solutions Network, Inc., and 2012 candidate for a foreign party presidential nomination. Currently CEO of Earth Intelligence Network, an accredited educational nonprofit. He's known for his advocacy of open source intelligence teaching 7,500 mid-career officers from across 66 governments, and is today the foremost proponent of applied collective intelligence, which integrates holistic analytics, true cost economics, and open source everything. The latter in engineering and information management approach that is affordable and, we're, and scalable. His most recent book is The Open Source Everything Manifesto, Transparency, Truth, and Trust. BigBatUSA.org, just one of his website. He's got uh, PiBetaIota.net as well, all linked up on Infowars.com. Now, back in September, he said here, and I played it last hour, so I won't play it again, that the word he was getting was a false flag with an Ebola simulant to basically create a political smokescreen to block out a political catalyst of true change in this country. Now, he, I was gone with a family issue. David Knight interviewed him a few weeks ago, and uh, he said, well, basically, I'll, I'll let him say what he thinks about what's currently happening. But there's so much to go over. From what I'm seeing, the default positions are being turned off. Ebola is being allowed to come in and spread. Do I think it's the end of the world? No, but it's certainly an example of how they are trying to undermine this country. To create a policy of dumbed down poor people who are so busy trying to find their next meal, they can't be politically involved. And again, we have a lot of phone calls. You're able to talk to Mr. Steele here today and bring up your points uh, on Ebola. The big question is, what's happening while we're looking at Ebola? We'll discuss that as well. Robert, great to have you here with us. 
and he may not be getting audio from me on his Skype. Robert, can you hear me? Yeah, we lost audio to him. Reconnect Skype's a wonderful technology, uh, but at the same time, but at the same time, uh, it does uh, have its bumps in it. So we'll get his take on all of that coming up as soon as we get him on. By the way, if you're a radio listener and you hear me say, play this clip, look at this article, we reach millions a day with video streams. We reach tens of millions a week on YouTube and other platforms. So it's a syndicated radio show on 170 plus stations, but it's also really a TV show. You can all find the free feed at infowars.com forward slash show. Be sure and pay that forward. Take that link, send it out to others. Tell folks about the national strike to draw attention to the inaction on Ebola and so much more. Because clearly him hiring a non-medical doctor, no Ebola background, a guy that runs uh, fake energy deals for Al Gore, as the new czar shows me, it's nothing but a big profit-taking operation, uh, a big uh, insider operation. All right, we do have Mr. Steele able to hear us. Thank you, Robert David Steele uh, of BigBatUSA.org for joining us. Uh, you heard my question. You've got the floor. You made that prediction where you said, this is what I'm hearing. Uh, what do you have to say now? What do you think's going on? What are your sources telling you? Well, the good news is that instead of a false flag, what we're dealing with is, is blatant malfeasance uh, by CDC and the NIH and, and this... Uh, this Dr. Gucci at NIH should be fired. I certainly agree with you that Klein is not a serious appointee. Uh, no czar ever is. Um, bottom line here is the U.S. government is not seeing to the best interests of the American public. I mean, clearly it's, it's criminal neglect any way you slice it. But tell us the intel you were getting. Two weeks before this guy is even in the news and three weeks before he dies or four weeks, saying, I'm hearing about a simulant Ebola uh, to be brought in as a false flag, and there could be a national strike over it. I mean, that's an amazing statement. I mean, wh wh what were you hearing? At the time, what I was hearing was that there was a very, there was, first off, there was complete confidence that Ebola would not reach the United States, uh, but that it could be introduced in the United States as a means of forcing the issue of passing a draconian quarantine law that would then be abused in the future. Uh, what I think we have now is real Ebola showing up because of the hubris, because of the ignorance, because of the irresponsibility of the CDC and the White House. Uh, the White House knew 10 months ago this was an issue. In 2004, Brent Scowcroft and others told the White House that infectious disease was the number two high-level threat to national security after poverty. Um, so now I think reality has trumped false flag. Now, it's still a threat, and the martyrs from Saudi Arabia are still a threat. But the U.S. government has become more of a threat than false flag if that makes sense to you. No, I get it. Who needs Saudi Arabian martyrs with Ebola uh, that are carrying it on purpose and vectoring it when you've got a government that just gives visas to people that are clearly sick in countries that are collapsing? I mean, that, that's just, uh, I, I mean, I get ineptness. I know that goes on. But the level of ineptness is like batting a thousand. How are they so perfectly inept? You know, I think part of the reason, and I've thought about this for a long time, part of the reason is that the U.S. government has never been held accountable for actually looking out for the public interest. Um, and what we have now is a perfect storm. Ebola could be an excellent motive. It could be a wake-up call for the American public, the good-hearted, common-sense American public. The government is not serving our needs. Maybe it is time for a general strike. It's just crazy that you brought that up a month plus ago, and then it just clicked for me Friday. We should have a national strike just pointing out why are the borders open, why are you allowing flights, why are you issuing these visas. Uh, I mean, this could be the catalyst. A lot of people that are smart, like yourself, are saying the same thing. Michael Savage thinks that they've really miscalculated and that this is ineptness.
Well, you know, I used to say that when given a choice between incompetence and conspiracy, always go with uh, incompetence. And then 9-11 happened. And of course, I've seen so many false flag conspiracies since then, 9-11. Uh